Hello folks, StylePoint here, and today we're going to be implementing the uh, logistic regression model. We're going to be implementing it from scratch in Python using only NumPy. Well, NumPy is going to be the only external module we'll be using. Uh, we'll be using the uh, built-in data classes module though, uh, because the data class decorator resides in that module, and of course we all love the data class decorator. Uh, anyway, let us uh, uh, dive into what we have here. Um, so the testing code um, that we already have, and once we're done implementing the model, uh, we're going to be testing it. And I've written the uh, the API or the uh, layout for the class beforehand. Um, I figured it would save some time, basically. Uh, but the first thing I want to talk about here is how logistic regression is different from the uh, linear regression. Like, what is the difference? Well, linear regression, the function for it is f of x, uh, xw plus b. So we take the input features, we multiply those by the uh, weights, and we add the bias. That's the entire kind of uh, like the formula or rule for the uh, uh, linear regression and that's the way it's implemented. For the logistic regression we can call it g of x. It's pretty much the same as linear regression except for uh, what linear regression does is that it uh, generates like uh, uh, values that can be uh, pretty much from negative infinity to positive infinity. It could be minus 64.5 or it could be uh, positive 20.4, it could be 6, it could be 7. Uh, in case of logistic regression, we need to be able to map these uh, values that the linear function produces onto a 0-1 uh, interval. And to do that, we use the sigmoid function. Now, I'm not going to talk a lot about the uh, sigmoid function today, because I think uh, this function uh, deserves its own video. So it's one of the activation functions, uh, and it's going to be a completely separate, like maybe even a different series, but I think it might be an implement series um, where I'm going to be covering uh, a lot of different activation uh, functions, including sigmoid and others like ReLU and 10H and so forth. But for now, let us concentrate on like the mean log loss, fit, predict, those kind of me uh, methods, as well as the, uh, uh, the fields that we need to pass to logistic regression for it to be properly initialized. Anyway, so uh, fx is this, gx, gx is that. So the difference, well, we apply sigmoid. What sigmoid does is that it maps the, uh, maps the input onto a 0, 1 open interval. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, so that's how we're going to implement it. And in addition to that, generate the PDF using LaTeX. And uh, um, this basically goes, uh, goes through like different uh, computations that we need to implement directly in the uh, class here. So we go through the, uh, the functions, like the log loss function, the mean log loss, um, also the sigmoid here. It's 1 over 1 plus e to the power of minus x. We find its derivative. There's this rule where the, the uh, derivative of sigmoid is sigmoid times 1 minus sigmoid. Um, as I said, I'm not going to go into that today. There's going to be a separate video about it. Um, and um, I also compute gradients of the log loss with respect to weights and bias. Again, this is super simple. Uh, we just need to know like the chain rule and the derivative of logarithm. That's pretty much it. And uh, the fact that uh, the derivative of sigmoid is sigmoid times one minus sigmoid it also helps with uh, uh, um, like simplifying this expression. You know, h times one minus h that cancels out. Uh, I'm gonna push this to GitHub as well, so uh, um, you should be able to look into that uh, and uh, see how this works. But again, there's nothing difficult. Uh, there's nothing we don't know off that is used here. Uh, but uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to follow this document, basically. We're going to uh, uh, use the uh, derivative calculations or the uh, partial der derivative calculations here uh, to implement gradient descent. Okay. Um, now, learning rate. What are some of the uh, fields? So the uh, learning rate is needed for the gradient descent. We're going to be doing proper gradient descent in this case. Epochs, that's the number of times we iterate over the data set. Threshold is for um, classification. Okay, if logistic regression gave us the probability of 0.5, let's suppose, and if the threshold is 0.8, uh, well, then 0.5, uh, uh, if this is a threshold, 0.5 is uh, less than threshold, and we're going to say, well, that's zero. So the answer is like no. On the other hand, if we had something like 0 .8, uh, 0 0.9, then 0.9 is great, greater than the threshold, and we would say yes. Okay, so threshold is used for classification. Okay. Um, uh, that's pretty much it. Logging um, is optional. We have it so that um, in case we want to log the loss values over epochs, uh, we can do that as well. And I find it very nice. We can see how the, uh, the loss converges. Um, and mean log loss is for that, basically. It's for uh, logging the loss values. Now, um, let's implement everything here following the, uh, what we have in the uh, document here um, to the right. Okay, so what's the mean log loss? This is that expression right there. So it's going to be 
return minus labels times np log predictions uh, plus uh, one minus labels times np log one minus predictions and the mean of that okay that's it we're done with mean log loss okay now what, we're, what i'm going to do is that i'm going to write the first two lines of the fit method then i'm going to uh, uh, get done with the predict method and then we're going to finalize the fit method so the first two lines are going to be initializing uh, uh, weights and uh, bias to do that we need the uh, number of samples and number of features number of uh, samples are not really needed here but we're gonna see that these are useful later on when we when we do the derivative or the gradient uh, computations um, and self dot weights self dot bias um, we could initialize them you know based on some kind of distribution but in this case we're gonna take a kind of a easy easy route and go with like zeros uh, now, um, as I promised, we're going to do the, uh, do the uh, predict method now. So all the predict does is that it basically uses this uh, where like ternary if operator or operation in NumPy. And it's like an if statement, as I said, with like uh, um, threshold and like the predictions. So what we do is that we apply sigmoid that we already have implemented here. We assume that we know how to do it. Um, as I said, there's going to be another video, so wait for that. But self.sigmoid of what we do in linear regression, we take the features, multiply by weights, and add the bias. Now, if this is less than self.threshold, threshold, um, then we're going to say 0. Otherwise, it's 1. Not NP, just the threshold. That's the entire implementation of the... Uh, um, of the predict and I think numpy is complaining here is it not not numpy but the pi right sorry okay yeah that's good um, okay so we're done with mean log loss this is for logging the loss values and predict that's already done as well now let's finish the uh, fit method so for underscore in range self dot epochs that's the number of times we iterate over the data set uh, let's look into a uh, uh, the document here let's look at what uh, we have for the uh, derivative with respect to weights and a bias okay so that's sigmoid of f of x i minus y i and that's like maybe we can do it using broadcasting so what we can do is that we can do prediction and that's going to be self dot sigmoid of uh, 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 features dot dot self dot weights uh, plus self dot bias difference we can compute that because you see difference sigmoid of fx uh, fx i minus y i and uh sigmoid f of x i minus y it's kind of the, the same difference we don't want to compute it twice so we can compute it once here so it's going to be prediction minus um self dot labels in this case it's just labels okay uh what we need next is that we need the uh, derivative calculation so we need the gradients with respect to weights well was it, what is that going to be well that's features uh dot uh, uh difference over num samples that's it. Uh, well, we need to make one change. It's going to be features that transpose. The reason we need to do transpose is that otherwise uh, the dimensions are not going to be line, uh, lining up properly, and we're going to run into like the, some uh, um, problems because, the, of course, the uh, uh, if we have even in a simple case of two-dimensional like matrices, if we have a matrix M N and matrix A B, uh, if we want to do if we want to multiply this matrix by that matrix, then N must be equal to A. Uh, so uh, this transpose helps us with that and for bias it's going to be kind of similar except for um, as the document says we just sum sum up the differences and divide by the number of samples so that's it and now we do the uh, gradient descent and that's pretty much uh, it's done in the same fashion for the uh, bias as well and if self.logging is enabled maybe we can do some logging here we can print uh, mean log loss um, maybe for like uh, some epoch actually maybe we can add that as well uh, epoch um, and that's going to be uh, something like self dot mean log loss because we already have that written for us with the prediction and um, prediction and labels I guess yeah so we have the labels here and let's only print out like the three decimal points for this Okay. Um, okay. This is again the uh, pyrite complaining, and that should be it. That's the uh, entire implementation 
uh, of the uh, uh, of the logistic regression, and we can look at this here now. We don't need that document anymore. Uh, we have the mean log loss fit predict, and we have these four uh, parameters. Okay, so uh, we can run this now, uh, and there we have it. We have the accuracy precision recall F score accuracy 0.926, precision 0.928, recall 0.909, F score 0.917. Uh, we can also enable this logging feature and see what's going on. Okay, okay, we can see uh, we we ran this here and uh, some fluctuations here. It seems it goes up and down, but then oh, then it then it kind of converges, then it kind of decreases, 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 decreases. Okay, so I think a better, maybe not the better way, but one alternative approach that we could take here is that we could log these loss values if we if we have the uh, logging enabled we can store these loss values sorry so lo loss value would be we can maybe extract this out of there uh, call this loss value and loss values append loss value and once we're done logging maybe plt.title uh, loss over epoch or something like that we can do x label of epoch y label of loss and maybe we can do plt.plot of these loss values and plt.show. Okay, so, and we don't need this document anymore. And I think that should be it. Um, let's do the logging now. Okay. Okay, there we have it. So this is loss over epoch. Um, and yeah, there were some fluctuations in the beginning, but in the end, um, it converged pretty smoothly. Starting this point, it, it gets the loss. Um, uh, the loss plot looks uh, a lot smoother here, and then I think it converges pretty well. Uh, there are approaches that we could take to alleviate or kind of reduce these very large fluctuations, but for now, you know, it, it still kind of converges, and uh, uh, we have good results in the end. I think relative. Well, it's above 0.9 for everything. So. Uh, um, that's going to be it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to uh, leave those as comments in the uh, comment section. I'm going to make sure to read all of the uh, suggestions and take them into account uh, and respond to uh, all of the questions. So once again, thanks a lot, and I'm going to see you next time.